Wow. Um, I don't know where to start about how generous PCBWay are uh, when it comes to uh, supporting makers like myself who, um, you know, I'm a small, you know, one-man operation in the southernmost uh, part of Tasmania, uh, but here they are helping me out. They've reached out to me on a number of occasions, and I'm a bit uh, sort of PCB agnostic, but leaning towards uh, PCB way more often than not. Oh, no. Wow. Because of a couple of things. First thing is the quality of their... PCBs is just awesome and you know the there's more swag in here than you can poke a stick at good lord is there anything else oh another oh, good lord <laughs> thank you PCB Wayne yeah so the quality of their uh, PCBs is well I've tried a few and uh, it's unsurpassed very very good the other thing is that there have been other manufacturers, particularly when I first started off, I would send them the files and they would send me back, you know, to their credit, I guess, exactly what I'd sent them, but it was just rubbish. I remember the very first PCB that I sent to PCB Way, and they said, so are you sure about this? Because if you did it this way, this would happen and this would be better and blah, blah, blah. And they were right. Uh, so PCB Way... Awesome, very good, and uh, they also, as I said, that you know they support their. Um, look at this! Oh, that's so nice. Um, they support their smaller makers like myself, and you know you can't uh, underestimate the value of uh, the support that you get from major players like PCB Way when you are first starting out. It is uh, very, very appreciated. So let's get this. Look at all these rulers. I'm going to have to find some stuff to measure. Um, <laughs> let's get these out of the packet and have a look at why these particular PCBs and uh, and how we're going to use them. Here we are on PCB Way's main page. Super easy to navigate. Just uh, upload your Gerbers. Um, type in your dimensions the great thing about it as mentioned before is that these guys will check your design which is you know for a, a noob like me uh, someone who regularly makes mistakes as part of the learning process let's say um, then that's really a great feature to have a nice safety net uh, of course they also do uh, cnc 3d printing and uh, and so on it's just a marvelous uh, organization great quality and uh, as i said also before really um, appreciate their support of the maker community so if you've got a pcb design coming up and you're not sure about um, you know whether it's going to be a good design or uh, what quality it's going to be highly recommend pcb way these guys will have you sorted pretty quick this uh project goes back so far now this is a really awful ugly early one although they all serve their purpose so firstly i used to this is a candle project by the way a fake candle um even before solar i was just using a couple of double a batteries to drive this circuit uh, i don't want to really focus on that too much uh, there's an a tiny 13 in there uh, an ldr to pick up whether it's night time or not uh, an adjustment for the brightness of the light uh, that is a 10 um, uh, kilo ohm resistor between reset and oh no sorry that is a 10 kilo ohm resistor which forms the divider that's right <laughs> it's been a while what I really want to focus on is the uh, the light that's coming out of it so there's a little lens on the top, but buried in there in amongst some um, hot glue is the 5050 LED, which is three individual LEDs, in this case yellow. And, uh, you know, we've had a look at this before where I'm driving, for instance, there's two PWMs coming out of here and I'm driving this. Uh, with two of the LEDs in a sort of a slow cycle and one LED in a sort of a fast cycle 
to simulate that candle. Now, there's some advantages and disadvantages of that. Uh, I guess one of the advantages is that this is a lovely yellow and it does produce uh, a pretty nice effect in the end. But let's say you didn't particularly want yellow. Let's say you wanted one of these to be maybe white. Now, I'm up to the stage now where I'm using the PFS154, which has three PWM channels, so we can ramp them all differently. So you could ramp an orange one, a yellow one, and a white one. And that's what I'm keen on doing is to try different LEDs, uh, which you can't get in this package. You can get RGB, which is fine, but you, you can't get anything else outside of that. And another thing that I started to think about was separation. So uh, a candle, a real candle, one which you burn, has a 3D flame, and you can see that sort of flickering and moving within the confines of you know a jar or whatever it happens to be. It provides a real separation, a real uh, sort of organic 3D uh, picture of what's going on. Uh, whereas this one is almost a single point source. It's actually quite small. So those two things together led me to design this uh, guy here. And one other aspect, which I'll talk about in a minute. This is pretty big. If you look at the board which is driving it, it's actually pretty big by comparison. And all it's doing is providing, well, almost all it's doing is providing light. You'll see that there are uh, three uh, inputs here, and that's for these three LEDs. And so you can choose what color you want. There is one current limiting resistor, which for instance, you might put at something like maybe 100 or 200 ohm. And then you've got these pads here. And what you do is you put, you can put in, which we'll, we'll have a look at in a minute, a, a, a variable resistor, a pot. And what that will do is enable you to actually vary the light coming out of these uh, with a lower limit provided by this uh, resistor here. And the whole idea is to make the assembly of these easier, uh, is, to, is to also give it like a lower limit for the, um, for the current coming through, uh, is to um, separate these out to provide this sort of 3D effect for the candle, hopefully and also to give you the flexibility of having different colors in here. Now we will return to the candle, but what I want to do to start with is have a look at a project which I did a little while ago during the winter actually, uh, the southern winter that is, where the temperature was being um, displayed at night time uh, so that I could tell roughly what was going on outside. Uh, and so there was a single uh, ice blue LED in there and it was flashing. I think it was something like one flash was between seven and 10 degrees, two flashes was between four and six degrees and then anything below that was three flashes. But I've got in mind a slightly more, um, what would you say, uh, <laughs> a slightly more um, well, higher information, higher fidelity, more uh, granularity, if you like. I don't know how you want to say, but basically what I'd like to do is have a think about all these different temperature ranges. Now that we're getting up towards warmer weather, we're getting overnight temperatures which are above the 10 degrees. And so the light that I designed back there in winter is not giving me any indication in this temperature range here. Now, we're not going to get too much more above 18 degrees overnight uh, here in Tasmania, but some of these other ones, uh, so this will give you a bit of a finer grain, having a look at what's going on outside. And what I thought I'd do is use um, probably red and blue and green, and uh, I didn't have green, so I've, uh, I've just got this fluoro pen here to indicate that. And there's probably lots of different ways of doing this, but one way which I thought might be useful is if I get uh, two flashes which are both blue then I'm less than two degrees and then what I'll probably do is increase the time between those two flashes to something like four or five seconds whereas I think the one that I've got out there at the moment is something like two seconds if it flashes blue and then green that would be between three and four degrees uh, if it flashes blue then red that would be between five and six and so on and finally anything that's over 18 degrees would just be three flashes in a row now, there may be better ways of doing it. I'm really curious to know if anyone out there watching in YouTube land 
can come up with a, a better scheme. Given that we've got three different colors to play with now, and, uh, and that we could come up with a way of getting this granularity uh, in the temperature, uh, in this temperature range, maybe even down to the degree, although the LM35 that's, uh, that's measuring this probably doesn't have much um, better, uh, you know, sort of quality of, uh, of measurement than what we're showing up here anyway. So that is the plan. So what I'll do is I'll put together the uh, the board which is um, which is going to drive it. It won't be one of these. It'll be one of the ones that, which is the stable jewel thief, an A tiny thirteen. Program uh, this up. And what I'm really curious to do is to try PCB ways. Um, lovely little boards that they've sent me here, and uh, and see if we can't get some um, accuracy or better accuracy on the measurements for the temperature outside at night time. Well, a little nervous, but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, five volts coming in. I think that's red, blue, and green, and they all should be going down that way to ground via the current limiting resistor, via the 1K pot if further adjustment is required, and we have red, blue, and green. Good start. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That's quite a bit brighter. And I guess what you could do in further development is to have this with its own current limiting resistor so that you could get a little bit more uh, separation there. But for now, that is fine. Happy that the PCB works. Thank you, PCB way. Let's get this one sold up and get the two talking to one another. Here we are with the A Tiny 13, which I've programmed up. Not really convinced of the code at this stage uh, because the indicator is bouncing around all over the place. It is actually reliably 16 degrees down here, so it should be somewhere between a red and green flash. Oh, yeah, I dropped this on the floor and then stood on it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it should be in this area here. So we're looking at maybe a red, then a green flash or a red, then red flash. There should be absolutely no way that we're getting blue, blue, less than two degrees in them. But you can see there's three flashes there for uh, greater than 18. Another three flashes for greater than 18. Yeah, that's pretty consistent. It's certainly not greater than 18 in here, though. And what worries me is that from time to time we're just seeing uh, flashes of green and flashes of blue in there, including a double blue. There's a double blue right there. Let's uh, give it a blast of um, cold air and see. Oh, sorry, PCB way, I've just blown you away there, and uh, and see if that helps. No, so we're not really getting anything on on that that's reliable. I I'm not convinced whether it's uh, code or otherwise. Um, for instance, sorry about the dark, but I just want to see what's going on. Um, what we've got is a uh, PB3 that is supplying uh, to what is the uh, input of the LM35. So it should turn it on. It should take a reading through PB4, and then it should, uh, in the code, make a decision about what to flash through PB2, PB1, and PB0, which is our red and our blue and our green, respectively. But... I'm not convinced at the moment that that's working. So I'm going to go and fiddle with the code a little bit more. I think as far as the PCB uh, goes, it's brilliant. But uh, I'm not sure that my programming is uh, up to scratch. So I'm going to have another look at that and we'll come back. I troubleshooted most of the components of the circuit, the code. I spent a lot of time with the code and the last thing that I did was decide to test the LM35s. So I fired up a very standard LM35 sketch and uh, ran it through uh, a few of its paces and, uh, and here's what happened. As you can see from this so-called LM35s, 
not getting very consistent readings because it's not an LM35. Clearly something else. Uh, and the tester says it's a transistor. If I touch the top of it, you know, it, like I'm not even affecting the temperature of it, of course, by touching it. But it, um, yeah, it's just all over the place. I'm not really sure what's happening. I can spray it with some cold and <laughs> it's jumping everywhere. Not an LM35. Oh, my Lord. Clearly marked LM35. It's got all the bits and pieces on it. But I was discovering to my horror that all of these pretty much were fake. And uh, apart from running them on standard sketches, if I put them in a component tester uh, to see what they are, well, you wouldn't expect this to come up. BJT NPM. Every single one of them. Looking online, uh, and I got these from about three or four different uh, AliExpress providers over a period of probably about two years, uh, looking down through the comments further and further down, suddenly starts to appear comments like, this is fake, uh, these are just NPN transistors, these are rebranded, don't buy, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they're all of them, all of them are the same. So, yeah, very disappointing. And I guess, <laughs> I mean, it's... It's a silly thing to say, but the sad thing is I can't even use them as transistors because I don't know, apart from the specs that come up in here, what they are. What are they rebranded as LM35s? Who knows? Something cheaper, that's for sure. Right, so how do I deal with this? Well, I went to, probably for the first time in a very long time, a local electronic supplier, and I said, do you have an LM35? And, uh, and they said, Sure, we've got an LM35, here it is. And they sold it to me for, are you sitting down, $5.95. Okay, got it home, put it into the sketch. It's not an LM35. And uh, that's pretty weird. So I looked at it again and it was an LM335. So what is an LM335? Well, very similar, I guess, to an LM35, uh, except that, you know, it measures of course, in Kelvin, after Lord Kelvin and absolute zero fame. So useful? I, I don't know. Um, I had some issues with it. Uh, here it is here in the, uh, the actual circuit. And uh, just to point out a couple of weird things, uh, the first pin is called ADJ, the adjustment pin. And what's supposed to happen is that you put a 10k pot or a 50k pot between here and the output and then you adjust for having the temperature of zero so you need an ice cube in a plastic bag against the uh, sensor and then you also adjust against 100 degrees uh, by putting uh, boiling water or something on it i mean it just sounds awfully messy um people describe it online as being fiddly but great when it's when it's there. Well, I didn't really have time for that. So I've gone with just putting a 4.7K a four point seven k resistor between uh, what I'm using is VCC, which is the pinout. Uh, what is that? That is pin number two. I think that's PB3. Uh, and it will be activated. Um, and that will then uh, be, uh, after a bit of settling time, will read back through. And this is A2, uh, which digitally is, uh, is PB4. And then on the other side, we've got our um, our PCB, and uh, just to uh, just to be perfectly clear, that's a PCB way PCB, and uh, you know the way that I've uh, hooked it up here is fine, except it does come out a little bit, and I don't know how many um, hours I've wasted saying it's not working, it's not working, and in fact it just it just come loose from the uh, from ground there on the other side, right. Oh, one other thing about the LM335, uh, it's very voltage sensitive. So when I was running it, I was getting wrong temperatures and I realized that I was running it by testing it on a nano and the nano was providing 4.83 volts, not 5 volts, and that was enough to throw it out. So mm, not my favorite. Um, probably the other weird thing was having to do some weird and wonderful coding to fit it into this uh, A tiny 13 because 
uh, you need floating point math. And as soon as you say floating point to the uh, A-tiny 13, it throws up its tiny little hands and says, no, I'm out, can't do it. Uh, it's just, um, yeah, I mean, it can, but it, it, uh, it blows uh, the rest of the code out of the water in terms of size. So I had to do a little bit of fancy footwork and, and I spent way too long looking at how do you, not emulate's the wrong word, but how do you do floating point operations using uh, integer or in this case, as I used it, long integer. So does it work? Well, let's have a look. So we've got five volts coming in and we've got, that's reading red, blue. Red, blue, red, blue. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, I have reordered uh, the lights here. So red, blue would be somewhere between 16 and 17 degrees. And my thermometer down here is telling me at around midday, it's 16 degrees. So 16 degrees uh, should give me um, red, blue. And we are getting, just check that one more time. Yeah, red, blue is nice. And then what we'll do is we'll spray a bit of air on it, upside down air, and that should cool it down. And we should see some of the other colors come through. So let's do that. So that's cooling it down. And I see blue, red. So between eight and nine degrees. And then as it warms up, we've got green, blue so it's warming up there 10 to 11 degrees and of course the warming up gets slower the closer it gets to the 16 degrees so we can hasten that somewhat so if i just put my hand over it excuse the uh, furry paws let's see what that then shows uh, that's red green so 18 so it's actually shot over the uh, ambient temperature i'm not going to use this um, yeah, look, all I really wanted to do was show that the PCB works and is uh, great. And I know what you're thinking, like, you didn't really need a fancy PCB for this. And I'm still going to do another video on this, what I really made this for, which is for the sort of like the 3D candle effect where you can use different colours. So, um, but I've spent way too long on this one. I did have a little bit of a thought that um, I do have a sensor kit. While I, what I'm ordering, what I hope is more LM35s, which is the easiest sensor for me anyway to work with, um, I remembered that I've got this like 37 in one sensor kit. So what I thought I might do is see if I can find an LM35 in there and uh, throw it back on and complete this project because that would be nice. It's taken way too long. We have the LM35 rescued from a temperature module and we're reading down here at the moment, let's just catch those flashes, the camera occasionally misses it, blue, red, around the 10 degree mark uh, because I just sprayed it really. So if I just warm that up with my mittens, um, we should be able to get that hopefully uh, maybe above the, uh, the 25 mark. That's 22 to 25, the two flashes. Yeah, there it is, above 25. And it should come down pretty quickly because it is a bit cool down here. There's two flashes. Uh, next one should be around the red-green mark. There it is. And then if I spray it again, I should be able to get it down to quite low. So that is, yeah, there's our, uh, there's our three down here and it'll warm up again. Uh, so the next thing to do is to put all of this in the stable jewel thief configuration i'm going to have to measure what the exact voltage is coming out it says 4.9 here but it's actually five and that's important for the conversion so i'm going to have to find out what's coming out of the stable jewel thief hard code that into the a tiny 13 and put it all together after that long long journey i think we're nearly there that is the circuit working for this week See you next time.